Tell me a bit about the key sort of infectious zoonotic diseases affecting Uganda and why you think a one health approach is essential in tackling these. Well, like I said, we have many uh, uh, aboviral infections. Well, uh, these aboviral infections are actually transmitted from uh, animals, and all these diseases transmitted from animals are actually referred to as zoonotic diseases because of the cycle between the animals and the uh, humans, or they could even be just between animals and animals. Um, mainly we have uh, uh, things like uh, Ebola and Malbec, which we know come from uh, animals. Although these are occasional, they are very important. We have uh, diseases like uh, Onyongnyong and Chikungunya, where the reservoirs are not very clear. We have diseases like West Nile, which we know come from uh, the birds. We have uh, 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 diseases, Bunyamwera, um, Abwamba. Uh, actually, we have like 22 of the aboviruses, which are very well known, are from, uh, were first identified in Uganda. So they have these Ugandan names, which means they are freely, more like freely circulating in the country. Yes. We have yellow fever in uh, the forests. We believe we still have yellow fever in the forests. Luckily, we don't get it coming out into the human population often because of the vector species are not that very are efficient and they don't normally prefer to bite humans so we don't get a lot of yellow fever. But these are some of the uh, serious uh, zoonotic diseases we have in the country. Well, uh, when these uh, outbreaks occur of these diseases uh, we try to engage other people in the different sectors so that we may go and investigate these diseases together. For example, when we have uh, uh, Ebola or Malbec, we make teams to go to the places where the outbreaks have occurred and we collect samples from different animals, we collect samples from humans and we try to uh, follow up links to see if uh, there are any animals which are involved. We 
we know very well that up to now we don't know the uh, uh, we don't know the reservoir animals for uh, Ebola. The reservoir animals for Malbec have been found in Uganda, and at the moment we know of uh, two areas, two places uh, where we have bats which we which are known to have uh, uh, endemic uh, Malbec virus in these places. So these are some of the studies that we've been doing. Of course, we study these bat caves with, uh, uh, with uh, people from the veterinary sector and uh, environment, uh, wildlife, and together with the Ministry of Health. So, what key learnings were you taken away from uh, this One Health incubator that we've just participated in? Well, from the incubator workshop, I can say is that uh, the concept of One Health uh, is a very good concept. Um, of course, the whole kind of concept um, lies on the fact that uh, uh, early detection and early response uh, is very effective in controlling infections. Uh, since these diseases are zoonotic diseases, if we can detect the diseases when they are still in the animals before they cross over to the humans, then we should be able to control these animals as early as possible. That apart, uh, we've seen that awareness of this could assist in early response because if the people are aware, if the people have got knowledge about One Health, then uh, they can report as quickly as possible. The other thing is uh, reporting is actually part of communication. Uh, if the people are to, to know, if the people are to get aware, we have to package the information well for them to be able to feel they're part of it and be able to respond and provide information as quickly as possible. The other thing is that we need to be very well coordinated as different sectors to act together, prepare together, and work together, provide information together, then we should be able to uh, effectively control these diseases through the One Health Initiative. Okay. What, so what specific actions will you, do you think you will take away from this incubator going forward? Well, uh, one of the actions is uh, we need to continually advocate for One Health. We need to have more meetings of One Health. We need to speak to our sectors because we have had uh, people from different sectors uh, coming in this workshop. These people should go back to their sectors and talk to their sectors and inform them that it is better to work together than to work separately. We know that here in Uganda we work together mostly when there are emergencies. But it would be better that we plan together, not only in emergency situations, but we plan together uh, our activities that will allow us to prepare very well, to prepare and work together in these situations. Recognise the importance of strengthening systems and multi-sectoral working within country. What has been the benefit working um, cross-border and also with other networks such as SASID and having a representative from, from West Africa as we've had with Dr. Barry? Well, uh, the important thing uh, of working uh, across borders is uh, the experience. We share experience with uh, other people. We gain from how they do their things. We get to know how they plan, how uh, uh, they manage to overcome uh, problems. 
and they do learn from us also. Then um, creating networks allows us to think together and uh, uh, because diseases do not have borders, these borders are actually uh, superficial borders and um, it would be very good for us to continue working together uh, because any of these disease outbreaks can be at the border and if we can't work, we haven't been working together, then it becomes very difficult. Uh, I believe you have seen during the outbreak in West Africa, which has been over a number of countries, these countries had to work together to be able to control uh, the disease. Because if they didn't work together, then infection can be in one con country and continues getting into the other countries. So uh, that is what I have learned in this, uh, learned in this workshop, that it is very, very important to work together and to work across borders. Great, thank you.